Hello, Commanders, and welcome back to Elite Dangerous Return from Beagle Point. We are continuing our journey back to the bubble, if I can get the galaxy map to come up. Our topic of today is uh, Jack of All Trades, Master of None, uh, basically talking about skills and things like that and how they kind of relate to things that are going on. But for those of you who are just joining the series, we are returning from Beagle Point. We went all the way out here to Beagle Point uh, over the course of many episodes, and we're a little over halfway back to our where we started from back in the bubble over here. We're currently a little bit away from Sagittarius A-Star, heading towards this waypoint that we've established here. And uh, once we get to there, we'll be able to set our uh, destination to Shinrata Dedra. The purpose of the journey has been to increase our exobiology rank to the status of elite, as well as hopefully make enough money to purchase a fleet carrier to go back out into the black and do all kinds of cool stuff with that. So that's been the reason, that's the reason for the trip. That's kind of what we've been uh, focusing on as we do this. And uh, we're gonna go ahead, get back on the road and hopefully find some cool, <clears throat> Uh, exobiology planets to go scan and find cool stuff. So, yeah, there's that. So, anyways, uh, like I said, the topic of today's discussion is going to be uh, being a jack of all trades versus specializing into some specific thing that you're trying to do. Um, for most of human history, I think that Aside from a very few specific things like being a blacksmith or something like that, most people ended up having to be some kind of a generalist. Uh, if you look at farming of any kind, you have to be able to do a lot of different things and you have to be able to do a lot of different things pretty well to have any chance of being successful in something as, complica as complex and complicated as farming. Um, <clears throat> I know it sounds like put stuff in the dirt, wait for it to grow, harvest it, and then, you know, sell the food once you get it. But in reality, there's so much more that goes into, you know, cultivating land and uh, putting, fo putting food in the ground. Even back before we had all the technology that we had now, you had to have a certain amount of knowledge and expertise in a bunch of different fields of study to be able to have the knowledge required to actually successfully create a crop, harvest that crop in a way that actually, you know, produce something of value and then being able to sell it. You had to be a business person. You had to know biology. You had to know <clears throat> weather. You had to know a laundry list of all different kinds of things to, you know, have any chance of being good at that. You had to be a generalist. You had to be a jack of all trades. Um, you know, and the, it's just kind of the way that it was for most of human history. Then we started getting into the Industrial Revolution and we started getting into more of people starting to specialize into specific things. We started to realize that if we could get people to become really good at one thing and just have them focus on that, we could get a lot more productivity out of them. Um, for that specific thing, if they just focus on the one thing and do that very well, we can get a lot more productivity out of them doing it that way rather than having people constantly switching gears and having to figure out what the hell they're doing. <clears throat> and, uh, you know, over the course of many years, yeah, that's worked out pretty well. Sorry, I'm trying to, f I'm trying to figure out, I can't do, I can't multitask. So th that's the reason why these discussions end up going like this. Uh, I don't think I'm gonna be able to get yeah, I don't think I'm going to be able to get into that. So we're just going to go ahead and move on. <clears throat> Target too close. What? <laughs> okay. Well, whatever. We'll just go ahead and move on to the next time. Um, we got into the Industrial Revolution, and we started making this slow, inexorable shift towards subject matter experts. People who would learn a very specific thing as part of a larger group of individuals, you know, basically becoming a cog in the machine. And, you know... Some cogs were more important than others, but everybody had to be able to perform their function and a very specific function. And, you know, up, up until recently, um, that has become more and more specialized. You know, factory workers used to be used to have to come in and make maybe a bunch of different things. And then now we're at the point where <laughs> people have to people have one specific job that they do and they don't do anything else and they spend their entire time doing this one thing because um, we've developed things to the point to where you almost have to be a hyper expert on something to be competitive in getting that job you know obviously we've always had things like doctors and and that kind of stuff where you had to have very specific a very specific skill set very specific body of knowledge you know, you have degrees and things that you have to get to be able to go, even have a chance of going to do that. 
<laughs> but now even just in general office work, you almost have to have uh, you almost have to have a. Uh, uh, specific degrees in certain certain kinds of things to even have a chance of getting the job whether you whether you actually need the degree or not to do the work you have to have it on your resume just to be competitive and you have to have experience that is specifically for whatever it is that you're doing it's not enough to just have adjacent skills you have to have very specific education and experience and you know certain keywords on resumes and things like that uh, that are hyper specific to whatever job it is that you're trying to get to if you want to have any chance of getting the job <clears throat> now the problem with this uh, this this shift that we've moved into of hyper specialization is that it forces you into many many years of study uh, many many years of gaining experience I slowed down what's the problem many many years of gaining experience in one specific task one specific field one very one very narrow aspect of life and I think that for most people that's something that's really hard to do because it's just incredibly boring to just focus on one thing over and over and over again I, at least for me <clears throat> I I can only speak anecdotally I'm I'm the kind of person who gets really bored doing the same thing for much longer than, you know, a few minutes. <laughs> um, you know, if it's not something I'm like hyper fixated on. Uh, it's just, it's really boring to come into work and do the same thing over and over and over again. And I know that, um, I know that that's, uh, that's an experience that most people share because nobody likes to be stuck in the same position for long periods of time. We want to have something new, something fresh. We look forward to promotions, not just because it's going to allow us to make more money or give us more status or anything like that. It's also because it gives us a new challenge. It gives us something new to focus on. It refreshes our mind because now, instead of doing the same stuff we've been doing for the last couple of years or whatever it is, we have this new responsibility, this new adventure that we're going to go on because, you know, we're doing something different now. So aside from the fact that, you know, it's it, it's just it's it's so boring to do these things. Uh, some of us really struggle with just focusing on one thing for long periods of time in general. Um, for myself, I'm one of those people that if it's not something that has intrinsic value to me mentally, I have a really hard time just giving a crap. I can f I've, I've developed the discipline to force myself to focus on things when I have to. But man, is it a chore. It's a real chore to have to like sit and focus on one thing unless it's something I'm really super interested in. Um, I can become hyper fixated on a video game um, for a period of time. Like certain video game, like uh, like I got into Path of Exile and it, it was pretty much all I played for a couple of weeks. But then you know I got I kind of got tired of it and now I don't play it anymore. <laughs> It's just one, I, I can't focus for long, long periods of time on something. It's, it's the reason why I, I was never able to get into the World of Warcraft in game because the 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 path to earning things is something that took months and months, not just you know focus really hard on something for a little while and then you get your reward and then you move on to something else. Most MMOs don't work that way. So I'm just I'm the kind of person I've never really been able to fixate on one thing for a long 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 period of time long enough to be considered an expert at it i think it's what is it it's like a thousand hours or ten thousand hours or something like that of time spent on something um, to be considered an expert at it um i can't like i can't imagine spending that amount of time on one single thing uh the amount of just drudgery that's associated with that just i shudder to think about it right now <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I can't, I can't, I can't do that. It's, that's not something I can, I can do. And to be perfectly honest with you, that's something that has really made it difficult for me to uh, make a career out of anything. Um, you know, I'm able to be good at a lot of different things. And by good, I mean good enough to do it in a way where people would be satisfied with the result of whatever it is that I'm doing. Let me adjust my lighting here a little bit. I feel like I have a lot of light. Ah, oh, that's better. I'm using natural sunlight, and unfortunately, it's a little bit bright right now. So I just had to adjust a little bit and get some off this side of my face there. Um, and I have curtains around me that allow me to do that. Um, what was I saying? See, this is my lack of attention span. Uh, 
<laughs> I struggle to fixate on things, or I, str I struggle to be able to really focus on things for long periods of time because I get bored. I struggled in school because of this. I sh I've struggled in my career because of this because I get tired of doing whatever job it is that I'm doing. And I get to the point where I just don't want to come in and do it anymore, and I want to find something else to do. Um, and that's just not the kind of attitude that lends itself towards making real um, success, uh, progress w towards success in your life because, you know, for the most part, you need to continue working at something for many, many years to have any chance of actually, um, you know, gaining any kind of serious success out of it. And I just, I don't have the capacity to focus on any one thing for that, that period of that, that length of time. And so, you know, um, like I said, I think I was saying I'm, I'm able to be good at a lot of stuff. I have a very diverse uh, list of skills that allows me to step into a lot of different kinds of things. Um, oh, I thought I didn't, I didn't press the button. But unfortunately, I don't have the patience and um, focus over a long period of time to become a true expert to be one of the people that is in demand for that kind of stuff. I can do the job and I can do it well, but I'm not good enough at anything to where people are like seeking me out to do it. Or they see my experience and they're like, oh man, we want him. Like my resume or whatever. So it's very, it, it's, it makes things difficult when you're not able to become an expert at anything because being an expert is what people want. Unfortunately, we've moved into a world where it's not enough for you to be able to do a job and you know do it in a satisfactory manner. Uh, you have to have credentials. You have to have reputation. You have to have a lot of different things, and that's the kind of stuff that only gets built up over a lifetime of work. It's just it's just kind of the way that it is. And for somebody like me who can't stand the repetitive, boring, um, grindy aspects of life, it makes it really hard for me to. F it ma makes it really hard. Ooh, okay, uh, it makes it really hard for me and people like me to find any kind of real success, to make any kind of real money, um, because we just we don't have that part of us that allows us to find the value of the grind. Um, I can understand logically that, you know, life is a grind and you just got to do it, but I don't have the, I don't have the discipline or the emotional discipline to make that the priority, I guess. I, I don't know how to say it. Uh, I'm the kind of person who drifts from one thing to another. Um, I get hyper-focused on something that catches my interest for a while, and then after a certain period of time, whether it be days or weeks or, you know, maybe even months sometimes. Oh, there's six bodies here. I actually want to... Uh, that's an icy body. Um, I can... See, this is, this is what I'm talking about. I'm easily distracted. <laughs> <laughs> Talking about uh, days or days or weeks or months, depending on what it is. If it's a video game, it has a high chance of catching my interest if it's good. Uh, but eventually, I get tired of it. Um, I was off and on with World of Warcraft for the entire time that for the for for most of the first ten years of its existence. Um, I played when the I played it when it first came out. I think I was. I think I actually bought a CD for that back when it first came out, because uh, they were still doing CDs back then. Um, but I, I, I remember. I remember hearing about it coming out. I played it. I played it obsessively for, I don't know, a long time. And I think I actually stuck with World of Warcraft, uh, playing consistently for a couple of years. But then I finally got to the point where I just, you know, I was getting bored with it. I didn't want to deal with it anymore. I didn't want to deal with uh, the gr the grind anymore. Um, and like I said, I've, I've never been the kind of person who is into end game content because for all of these games, the end, the end game content is by definition a grind. You're doing the same thing over and over and over again, hoping that the gear that you need drops or the item that you need drops or whatever it is. Um, the, the lure for me for these kinds of games is the adventure part of it. And the adventure is gone when you're just going back through the same zones over and over again. It's just, it's not fun for me. Uh, so anyways, uh, I would play the expansions when they came out and I would level up a bunch of different characters through the expansion and then I would get bored. I would 
stop my subscription and find something else to play. Uh, and I just I, I kept doing that over and over again, and I never became an expert at World of Warcraft. Uh, I became highly experienced in it from a leveling characters aspect, but never really put much effort into the, the, the hardcore part of the game where you get to the end and you start doing raids and all of that kind of stuff. Like, I don't know that I ever participate. I, I know for a fact I never participated in a raid. The only raids that I ever did were the super low level ones in later expansions once your character is high enough to be able to solo them. And then I went back and did some of the original like vanilla raid stuff just by myself because I was high enough to just stomp everything. Um, I just I really struggle to I really struggle to uh, focus on something long enough to become what other people would be like impressed with, and that makes life hard because um, even though I have a, a diverse array of skills that you would think would make me able to land anywhere, when you don't have expertise at anything and you live in a world that has become hyper reliant on people being experts at things, and being an expert gives you the edge in finding work, it makes it very difficult to, you know, pretty much do anything. Let me focus on this for a second and see if maybe we can find ourselves a planet. And then we'll get... Uh, I want to talk about AI here in a second, but let's, let me... Let me go through and see if any of these uh, high metal content planets actually have anything. It doesn't seem like it. I'm guessing that um, one of these gas giants probably has... <clears throat> Probably has a high metal content planet around it. But there's just there's too many bodies here and I'm not really interested in uh, going through each one of them. If they don't show up on the initial scan, we're just gonna move on. Um, so yeah. It, yeah. I know I'm not the only pr I know there's a lot of people like me, and I know a lot of us struggle because we don't have the patience or ability to just focus on one thing long enough to make ourselves competitive in that one specific field. And I think it's kind of a double-edged sword. You know, um, you know, you become a ja you can be a jack of all trades, and you're not a master of one of any of any of them. But the other side of that is, is that you can become an expert in something, and then when that thing becomes irrelevant, you have to start completely over. And being somebody who is relatively good at a bunch of different things should make you able to land on your feet when things go upside down. But then we've allowed our society to become something that uh, is hyper specialized. So there's really no <laughs> there's really no there's really no winning. Um, you might win for a while becoming an expert at one thing and you're competitive for a while and then your thing goes away and then you're back with all the all the people who didn't sit down and actually figure anything out. I have a degree. That degree doesn't hasn't helped me get it. I, like the jobs I've had since I got a degree, haven't hasn't hasn't helped me. Didn't require a degree, or they they required a degree, but the work I did didn't require anything I couldn't have learned in five minutes on the job. So, and I'm glad I didn't pay for it. Like my GI Bill paid for my entire education. I didn't have to. I, I'm not stuck with any kind of loans or anything like that. So I'm I'm really happy about that. I've advised my children to if you if you need a degree to do whatever it is that you want to do, then so be it. But if you don't if whatever it is that you if, if you don't know what you want to do or if you can do whatever whatever it is that you're trying to do without saddling yourself with this uh, loan this debt that you can't ever get rid of, avoid it. So, you know, I know I'm kind of rambling around a little bit. I, I'm trying to stay on topic as best I can, but um, in keeping with my inability to focus on one specific thing at a time, sometimes uh, sometimes I go off on tangents, and then I get distracted by scanning these planets, and this is kind of how it goes. Ooh, single biology on a high metal content world. That would be nice if it was two, because then we could be. Uh, that was it. And then we could be relatively assured that it is a uh, that it is one that has the uh, stratum. What's the word? Tectonicus. Stratum Tectonicus. I don't know why it wouldn't pop into my mind. Um, so all of that by itself is already enough of a problem. Then you have to start... What's going on with the... Is it going to... My camera is not auto-focusing, or is not auto-centering on me. Okay. <laughs> So all of that by itself is enough, right? But then now we're entering a new period of time where you have artificial intelligence stepping into the mix. 
And so in addition to losing against people who are hyper experts at things, now even the more general things that we should have been able to find are gonna be further reduced because now you have AI stepping in and filling those roles because um, AI is really good at doing generalized tasks that don't require uh, really highly developed and complex levels of uh, analytical skill. So the question that I'm, the, 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 the comparing and contrasting and questions and thoughts that I'm presenting right now are still valid right now, but how much longer will they be? The jack of all trades versus fixating on a specific skill could end up becoming something that is completely irrelevant because AI steps in and makes it so that neither matters because now AI is doing all of the stuff and the rest of us are, are just kind of screwed. And I'd like to believe that, you know, we're moving into a period in history where uh, the machines are going to take over all the hard work and all of that stuff and the rest of us are going to be able to focus on whatever makes us happy. Uh, that's the utopian way of looking at the world. But <clears throat> the reality is, is that even if that does end up being the uh, final state of humanity, there's going to be a relatively long period of time as we m evolve into that, where there's going to be a lot of human suffering. There's going to be a lot of people who get left out and aren't able to survive uh, without the charity of others. Um, you know, it's nice to think that we're going to move into this society where nobody has to work anymore and everybody is able to follow their passions and do all of this stuff. But the reality is, is that there's going to be a long stretch of time where, you know, people still have to work. A certain portion of the population still has to work. It's not going to be an option for, for everybody to just stop working and, you know, AI takes over and does all of the stuff we don't want to do. There's going to be a period of time, a long period of time, where some of the population has to work and some of the population and a lot of the population isn't going to be able to work and there's going to be a lot of resentment about that on both sides because the side of the population who doesn't want to work or the side of the population who can't work is going to envy the people who have money and power and all of those things because you're not going to be able to just erase that. You're not going to be able to tell people that you have to work and these other people don't have to work and just suck it up. No, they're, they're going to want something for the effort that they're putting in above everybody else. So the people who aren't working aren't going to have anything and the people who are working are going to resent the leeches who aren't doing anything and they're having to support them. It's just human nature. That's the way that we work. We're going to there's going to be people who resent the people who do are going to resent the people who don't. And there's going to be a lot of conflict there. And a lot of people are going to suffer because, you know, it's nice to th it's nice to think that, you know, we as a society are going to take care of people, but I think that the, <laughs> I think that the, uh, what's that, what's that space show, um, with the, oh, uh, the Expanse. I think that the Expanse is, the, the Earth in the Expanse is probably a more likely future based off of how humans act towards each other, how we are selfish in nature, and, you know, yeah, we'll do we'll do the right thing by making sure that everybody has a basic level of existence, but outside of that, you're on your own. And there's going to be a lot of people who are it's just going to continue as it is now. There's going to be a lot of people who get left behind, who have no opportunities, who, you know, maybe they get fed, maybe they get fed, but they have no prospects for the future because there's no opportunity. And there's going to be a small portion of the population who has all of the opportunity and they're going to be using AI to make sure it stays that way because um, we understand that there is a finite number of resources in the universe and a the hyper the hyper aggressive the hyper aggressive hyper motivated people are going to be out there trying to grab as much of it for themselves as they can and the rest of us are just going to have to take what we take what's left over <clears throat> that's the way it's always been and it's the way it's always going to be um, you can fight against human nature if you, you you can you can argue against human nature if you want but i don't think that history shows anything other than some people are going to take as much uh, we, people who can are going to take as much as they can and the weak end up not having anything and that's just the way that it works <clears throat> so that being said what can we do now to you know try to prepare for a, a potential future like that well to be perfectly honest with you there isn't really much we can do um 
All right, hold on a second. I would really like to find a planet to land on now because we are almost out of time. So let's see if we can find a planet that will allow us to land. Are these far away? Nah, that's not too bad. Wait, was that biologic? Uh, we'll target that one and see if maybe we can get some bacterial scans on that. Oh, here we go. That's even better. Uh, okay, so we'll just go ahead and start heading in that direction. Start heading this way. Get our super cruise assist turned on. Get her lined up and then full throttle. <clears throat> so yeah, my last bullet point that I have here is what skills will carry us into the future? I have absolutely no idea. If I knew the answer to that question, I'd be rich right now because I'd be at the bleeding edge of figuring out what needs to happen, what I need to do to position myself in a place to make that, to take advantage of whatever that is. Um, obviously it's going to be something to do with artificial intelligence. That seems to be the next, uh, the next leap forward in our, you know, societal push towards whatever it is we're going to end up being. But, uh, unless you have a very unique mind that's able to see parts of things outside of what is obvious, you know, it's really hard to figure out what you need to do to take advantage of that. Um, I'm sure... I'm sure there's going to be some people who figure out specific things that they can do, but artificial intelligence, we, the, the things that it's going to be doing to everything in our lives in the next 10, 20, 30 years, there's just, there's, it, there's so many ways it's going to reach into our lives that it's almost impossible to really have a solid idea of what to do. Um, anything you learn right now could be obsolete next year, you know? That's just, that's, <laughs> that's hard. That's hard. It's hard to make decisions when the future is as uncertain as it is right now. Um, you know, it, it makes you afraid to invest your time into anything. <clears throat> Excuse me. Because, you know, next year, they might have figured out a way to make artificial intelligence do that job better than you could ever possibly think of doing it. And then, you know, so it, it becomes this, it becomes this existential hopelessness of, well, what, what am I, what, 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 why should I even try doing anything? Like anything I try to develop right now, is just going to be irrelevant by the time I get good enough at it for it to matter. <laughs> um, a lot of people are saying that doing uh, content creation like this could be a potential future for people who have a knack for it, mostly because, um, AI is never going to have the ability to truly replicate the human to human interaction that we are craving when we go for content creation like this. Um, the reason you're watching this video, and especially if you've been watching this video for any length of time, you've gotten to this part and you're listening to me talk right now, you're watching this video partially because you're hoping to get some kind of information. Obviously, you're trying to get some kind of entertainment, but a lot of it is just you want to have you want to feel like you're having a human interaction with somebody. Um, you want to feel like you're having a conversation with a person and that's something that's not going to be that's not something that's something that's not going to be re replaceable with AI AI is never going to get to the point where it can where it can replace a human being uh, interacting with you now yeah it might get to the point where it can maybe trick you into thinking that is real but at some point in your interactions with an AI, no matter how complex, no matter how advanced, no matter how anything, how whatever it is that they make it, there will be things about it that kind of instinctively tip you off that I'm not dealing with an actual person here. There's something there's something off about this situation. Uh, and it's because the AI is just not going to be able to fully replicate a human being. N not 100% all the way in a genuine way that makes you feel a real connection with them. They may be able to fake it for a while, but eventually you're going to be like, hmm, there's something weird about this. And it's because there's something weird about this. It's not a person. So, you know, obviously AI is going to definitely step into the content creation world and make massive waves. And there's going to be a lot of people who end up suffering because of that. But at the same time, I can kind of see the argument of, you know, content creation being one of the few spaces that ends up having some level of protection from AI because... 
a lot of people watching content like this it, it's because they're looking for a human interaction because they're lonely and they want to find somebody to hang out with and when you know that the entity that you're hanging out with is not an emotional real human being there's going to be a little bit of a it's, it's like diet soda right it's close but not quite and there's a weird there's a weird aftertaste that comes from you know drinking diet soda versus having something that has real sugar in it or a real, or a real sweetener you know things that we actually like to have ai is going to be like that it's going to be it's close you know it's close and it's enjoyable but there's just something about it that doesn't resonate properly this is kind of the way that it's going to work. <laughs> so, uh, other than that, though, I have absolutely no... Ooh, I have absolutely no idea... Did I not... Oh, I didn't put my landing gear down. That might help. I have absolutely no idea what other areas of the world are going to have any chance of actually... <laughs> of actually surviving the AI apocalypse outside of if you can just figure out a way to get in on the AI thing and uh, turn it into something that makes money for you. And while I like to believe that we're eventually going to get... Come on. While I like to believe that we're eventually going to get to the point where, you know, machines are doing all of the work and human beings are free to just pursue their dreams and do whatever they want and all of that... Eh. Maybe we will, but even then, there's still going to be a long period of evolving towards that. And it's going to be well after world... I mean, unless, you know... Look, there's, other, there's also the idea that, you know, my generation may be the first generation that never has to die. There's always that, so I don't know. We'll see how that evolves. But the point is, is that, you know, assuming that the status quo of, of you know, lifespans and stuff like that doesn't drastically increase people today will probably be long dead before we get to the point where machines are able to do everything for us and you're free to just do what you want. It's just going to be a long period of time. And if you're not free to do what you want, that means some people are going to have to work and a lot of people are going to be unable to work and it's going to cause a lot of strife and problems. And that's just the way that it is. So, yeah. I don't know. I've never been... I know that the subject of this video is, you know, being a jack-of-all-trades and... I, th I think that for me, that's probably been the best way to go because I would probably wouldn't be able to do a YouTube channel like this and have any chance at it, as small as it is. I wouldn't have any chance at all if I didn't have the body of knowledge that I have because I haven't been able to focus on one thing. And it allows me to have some kind of variety in my in my in what I say and how I act. Um, I know a lot of stuff. I know a lot of different things. I'm not an expert in anything. I don't know enough about a specific topic to really go in depth on anything, but I know a, a reasonable amount of a lot of different things to be able to talk about a lot of different things. And, you know, I think that serves me. I'm not sure where the bacteria is for this, but we're going to go ahead and call it an episode. Hopefully you guys had lots of fun. Be sure to click the like button if you did so that the YouTube algorithm will know and send the video out to as many people as possible. If you're not a subscriber, please consider subscribing now so that when the next video comes out, it will show up in your feed and you'll be able to watch it as soon as it becomes available. Channel members get early access to all of my content, so be sure to click the join button, check out the list of options available there, and decide if any of those are right for you. If you're not interested in a membership but would like to support the channel, you can always use YouTube version of a tip with that thanks button. Direct contributions are greatly appreciated and a critical component to helping to turn this channel into a full-time gig, which is the dream. So again, thank you very much for your time. Hope you've enjoyed the flight. Be sure to come back for the next one, and I'll see you then.